Hello, everybody. This is Tony Turner, and welcome to the market now as of Friday, May 24th, at about 1.45 p.m. Eastern. Well, the durable goods orders report for April, it came out this morning, was mixed. Total durable goods in quarter, uh, orders increased 0.7% month over month, following a downly revised 0.8% increase in March. Excluding transportation, durable goods orders were up 0.4% month over month. The key takeaway from the report is that the order increases were seen for most components, underscoring the idea that manufacturing activity remains supportive of ongoing growth for the U.S. economy. That's a good thing. And now let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First, as we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. Of course, this is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our benchmark S&P 500 index. Now, when I captured this chart today, again, about 1.45 p.m. Eastern, the SPY was trading at $529.42. That's just a couple of points uh, below the May 21st, and that was this past Tuesday. We had an all-time closing high on that day at 5 3136. So that's this tiny little green candle you see here, 53136. We know that um, SPY has marched up, and you can't see October on the chart anymore, but Sp the SPY has marched up its 20 day moving average since its October 2023 intraday lows way back here. That was at $409, and interest rates started lower, and the SPY turned upward. Uh, it marched uh, up the 20-day moving average, as we can see here on in. We're in its seven, seventh month now, but it marched up there all the way through March 2024, then made an all-time high, uh, all-time closing high, I should say, uh, at um, in March at 400, at, excuse me, at $523.17. And that was a 28% gain, so that was pretty darn good. Now, from that high, the SPY did lose its mojo. We saw a big outside day here that could be a hint of what was going on, and we saw it close below the 20-day moving average. That was the first time in a long time price had done that. It faltered a bit, then rolled over and started down and came back and came down to the April 19th low of $493.86. And when it did that, for the first time in a long time, it fell down below the 20-day moving average, the red line, and the 50-day moving average, which is highly watched even by institutional traders. So it fell below that 50-day line, and of course, it hadn't been below that for many, many months. So it came down here to the April low of $493.86. It struggled to rally. It rallied higher. It was a struggle. It, it grappled um, it grappled around and with the 20 day moving average again by now that was inverse so it had to fight the 20 day to get over it then the 50 day to get over it and it did and on May 5th it finally hopped above the 50 day moving average to about $516 and it stayed there so that was a good thing price can't go up forever it has to go down sometimes to be able to get the momentum to get going back up again uh, then on Tuesday of this past week, as we just mentioned, uh, it closed at a new all-time high of $531.36. So we say, okay, now what? Uh, sometimes you hear the saying, leave in May and stay away. <laughs> a lot of times the market will get tired in the summertime. Um, as I uh, told somebody today, I can remember saying August lows so many times in my career, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen now. We do have a tremendous power be, be, uh, beneath all of our many of our tech stocks right now, so that's remained stock. So we've, we've got, had really good gains here, uh, so we're just going to have to see in the coming week what comes up. I'm going to call our new resistance here at 533, 534, as yesterday's intraday high did touch 533. That was Thursday. Now we have potential price support at 524 from these prior highs here, that consolidation. 
Uh, we have the 20 day moving average coming in at 519. So basically just a point under. We have the 50 day moving average potential price support at 515, 516 right here is more potential price support. Uh, then of course we can look down to 500 as uh, potential price support and down to that 494 low that we talked about before. So if, if, if we do see any uh, tiredness in the SPY, we do have a lot of potential support for it to use. Uh, and we know, you know, guys, we know we're in a really sweet bull market right now, but, but time will tell. We don't know what's going to happen next. Nobody ever does. Um, but the coming week will tell us if we have more upside ahead, if it's going to have to move kind of sideways here to gather more energy, gather more bulls, or if it, the spy needs to take a break and rest and maybe go sit down on the 50 day for a while. So let's be very, very wise here and trade carefully. Our next chart today is a daily chart of the Invesco QQQ, symbol QQQ. Of course, this is the ETF which follows the NASDAQ 100, the top non-financial stocks in the NASDAQ stock market. Now, this is the ETF where the big momentum stocks reign, the big tech stocks like NVIDIA, Meta, AMD, Microsoft, that whole group. <clears throat> Excuse me now, as I captured this chart today, the Qs were trading at $458.30. That's just a couple of points above its all-time closing high on May 21st, and that was Tuesday of this week. And you say, well, it's above the all-time closing high, so how can you, wouldn't we say this is at the high? Well, it's at the high right now. Um, at the 458, but we don't know if it's going to close there yet or not. Maybe it will and maybe it won't. Uh, the all-time closing high officially so far is $455.80. So we'll have to see where it stays today. And this candle here doesn't count because it opened high but closed down lower. Uh, that would be yesterday's. So, um, I know it's confusing, but just remember, we're talking about closing highs as being more important than intraday highs. So the Qs are trading again at $458.30 right now. Again, we don't know what it's going to be at the moment where it will close, but it's, it's bullish right now for sure. Now we know that the Qs made a low back here at $342 in October of 2020, excuse me, yeah, 2023. We know that like the SPY, it climbed in a very strong uptrend for the most part up its 20 day moving average, uh, marched up to the all time high at that time, uh, right here on March 22nd of $446.38. That was a 27% gain, very sweet. Then like the SPY, the same pattern, we see weakness, it comes down and we go, that's okay. But then it dives below the 20 day moving average and stays there, which it hadn't done in a long, long time. Then, then this candle here took it down below the 50 day. We haven't seen that in many, many months back in October. Weakness set in and it, it fell down again below those moving averages for the first time. Now, it finally did a dumpster dive down here to $413 on April 19th, same day the SPY hit its low. Uh, from there, like the SPY, it struggled to move higher, but it did. It made higher lows. You got to give it credit here. Moved back up over the 20-day moving average and back up over the 50-day moving average on May 6th. Finally got over the 50-day moving average to 440 and then continued to move up again to its current price to where it is now at 458, $458.30. So this is all good. It's all uptrend except for a little uh, dip we had in April, which of course we really needed. You've got to have, again, price has got to move lower sometimes to move higher. It doesn't go straight up forever as much as we'd like it to do so. So now, uh, trading here, right here, where's our next resistance level? I'm going to call it at 460, 461. 
as yesterday's intraday high was at $460.58. So we'll call it up here. As I told you last week, resistance and support are like a, t a net on a tennis court. It's a very firm boundary, but it's not going to, price isn't going to end, end up at exactly the same price as it was a month ago or a year ago or a week ago. So we give it a little bit of room there. Uh, so we have, um, then we have as potential price support down here, we have the prior highs, which were at 458, 459. Uh, excuse me, for 48.49. Then we have support at the 20-day moving average at about $443. We have more potential support at the 50-day moving average at $439. Then we have the May 1st low at 420 and the April low at 413. So uh, we have all this in mind. Um, it, it, again, sometimes summertime can be slow. We'll just have to see what happens. We have a lot of geopolitical events going on and so forth. That will be important to see what happens with all that. And uh, we are in a strong uptrend. So please, um, next week we'll see if the Qs can remain strong and if it can continue higher or if it needs to take a breather. So as always, please keep an eye on your protective stops. Our next chart today is one that I've been watching for a long time. I think we talked about this a couple couple of months ago, um, but I haven't seen it really, um, I thought, but it hadn't really made a move until now that I think may be worthy of our attention. Um, we all know that tech stocks are high and maybe going higher, so we all know that by heart, but I wanted to find something that that uh, was more of a bottom fishing move right now. So I uh, chose this stock ETF. This is the Global X Hydrogen ETF, symbol HYDR. Uh, it is a global ETF, global companies. It has 25 holdings. So you may not have heard of all these companies. We have Bloom Energy, Plug Power, Ballard Power, SFC Energy are some of the top holdings. Now, when I captured this chart today, the HYDR right here was trading at $6.44, trading just, just, just at, exactly at, exact, actually, the 200-day moving average, which is coming down overhead. 200-day moving average coming down overhead can be very tough resistance for any stock or any ETF. And um, I'm kind of anxious to see what's going to happen here. It, uh, when it, uh, and you can't see this on this chart. I just want to tell you, I looked at a long-term chart and the HYDR initi uh, initiated trading at $24.50 in July of 2021. And it pretty much fell in a downtrend, easy going, but a downtrend right from the beginning. It went up a little bit and then fell down uh, year over year from July of 2021. Then, as you can see, if you look on this chart, look left with me, in January, uh, it was building a base here, October, November, building a base, then fell hard in January. That didn't go well. Then it tried to go up and get back over the 50-day moving average. Couldn't do it. Couldn't get over it in February. Uh, tried really hard, finally kind of noodled up over it in March of this year, then fell back down to its April lows here. This is the all-time low at $4.80 so far, <laughs> uh, at April low at $4.85. However, um, and I've been hearing more and more about hydrogen, so um, I think that's probably, it looks like it's going to start coming out into the forefront a little bit. Uh, so again, it fell down to this April low at $4.85, then gradually climbed out of that low, moved up over the 20-day, which was inverse to the 50, then finally moved up over the 50-day, and then the 20-day moving average moved over the 50-day, which is bullish. But then right here, what I really like to see is as it's moving higher, volume is coming into it, uh, more volume than I noticed earlier on this chart, except way back in November. So this looks like a little steady stream of volumes starting to come into HYDR. 
Um, it is moving higher here. The 20 day is cro uh, crossed above the 50 day. And again, it's right at the 200 day. It is uh, moving average. So, okay, looking at this chart in the short term, it is overbought. Okay, the 14 day RSI is overbought here. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the next uh, short term week, two weeks, I wouldn't be surprised if it pulled back towards $6. In fact, I'd even hope it does in a way because I can buy it lower. Uh, so that said, in the coming week, if the HYDR can remain above its 20-day moving average, which is coming in at right now at $5.75, okay? 20-day moving average, $5.75. If it can remain above that, I will add a very small position in case it's still up here, I'm going to add a small position to my trading portfolio, and I'm going to put in a stop here at 550. And a lot of you are going to say, wow, that's a pretty big percentage for a stop. And that's fine. You can put it wherever you want if you want to at all. I know that, but I kind of think it may move back down here. Um, not sure, but as long as it can stay above the 20 day, I want to get a little bit in my trading portfolio. Again, my stop is going to be at 550 and that's below the 50 day moving average, which is coming in at 555. Now, if and when the HYDR can move above $6 and 75 cents, I will add to my position. And of course, by then my stop will be a closer trailing stop. So you may want to keep an eye on the HYDR in the coming week. And now here's some news from TonyTurner.com. We have lowered the price of all of our online training programs pretty dramatically to make them more accessible to everyone. So if you'd like to become a more profitable trader, now's a great time to check out all of my training programs from our ever popular seven steps to successful trading to how to swing trade successfully, good for this market, how to trade the trend for profits. One of my favorites, how to read charts, great for novices and everyone wishing to brush up on your trading skill sets. Three winning setups, great. And bottom fish like a pro, hope that's what we're doing right now with HYDR. Find out how, to, how these timeless programs can help you earn more money quickly and easily. So be sure to check them out by going to the link on this screen or easier still, just click on the orange button below. Until next week, be careful out there. Keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner and this is The Market Now.